Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Unscripted Faith. I'm Jay Anthony Gilbert alongside here with Angela Madden. Listen, we've got a fantastic show for you. We're so excited. Listen, it's another ladies' day today. It sure is. But yeah. before we even go there, Pastor Jay, you were just away for the walk. How I was, was it? I was. It was outstanding. The March for Life in Harrisburg. That's where I was at, y'all. I didn't get a chance to make it here the last couple of days, but it was outstanding. Thousands of people coming together to stand for life, to march for life. And what was really unique is that all the senators and representatives that were there, yeah. they're not in session but they Come all on. came in the middle of the rain and the Come cold on. to stand for life. And it's such an honor That's to be beautiful. a part of that. It was just great. That's beautiful. I, we missed you here. We really did, but oh, we had some amazing um, guests and today's gonna be no different. I'm super excited because we're gonna get to talk about prayer. Amen. We know, Lord knows, honey, we need prayer in this hour and always need prayer. Um, and we're gonna get an opportunity also to sit down with one of my dear friends. Come on, somebody. Yes, I'm excited. Today's gonna be a ladies day, but Jay, you gonna get in too. I'm gonna be all right, I'm gonna <laughs> be all right. I'm all about being around the ladies and hanging out and having a great time. But you know what? Did you know that prayer is so powerful that it can create a ripple effect, not only in your life, but others in the world as well. Our guest speaker and author and faith fuel transformation coach, Kelly Tyen, knows all about the power of prayer, hallelujah. She's actually living proof that prayer works and God still performs miracles. Kelly, welcome to Unscripted Faith. Thank you so much, I'm so excited to be here. Yes, we're glad to have you and we love your accent. Hailing all the way from Boston. Boston. <laughs> I do pack the car. Yes, she I'm not going to lie. I do. <laughs> hey, my <laughs> sister-in-law is from Boston, and every once in a while I'll be talking with her, and that accent will slip out as well. Yes. And so. I've tried to work on it. No, it's stay not with happening. It. It's all good. Yeah, no, that's right. It's not happening. Yeah. We like it. I went to Boston College, so I feel at home here. <laughs> but as a speaker, sometimes I'm trying to say speaker. It yes. just doesn't sound right. I'm a speaker. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, Kelly, we're excited to have you on, and we want to hear a little bit of your story because your upbringing has really shaped who you are and speaks to what you're doing today with the power of prayer. So, can you share just a snippet of your story? Sure, so I grew up an only child, two of the most amazing loving parents a girl could ever ask for. Mm. And my mom was just a blessing in my life. Every day she was praying and loved mm. Jesus so much and it just, she just models that in my home. So that's all I knew. However, she had rheumatoid arthritis, mm. which was the worst kind and worst case of person could actually go through. Her mm -hmm. hands, her feet, every joint in her body was just crippled, mm -hmm. swollen, lots of pain. However, mm -hmm. her faith was, it just was something I never experienced. Mm -hmm. I never saw anybody have this kind of faith. Mm -hmm. And it got her up in the morning. She never sat home. She never whimpered and cried and complained. She just knew I can do this with Jesus. Yeah. And that's how she walked and that's how she lived every day. And I was really in awe yes. as a little girl, growing up seeing a mom, wondering how she, how was she doing this? I'd question it. Wow. But as I became an adult and went through some things in my life, I just realized I need her kind of faith. And yes. how do I get that? I want what she has because I saw her experience the power of Jesus in her life. and you know, getting her up in the morning and just getting through her days. But I had to learn how to get that power myself. Yes. So her prayers really, it started in the home as her praying over me, mm -hmm. but then me saying, I have to really start praying in a new way so I can feel that peace that no matter what I'm going through, mm -hmm. I can still get up another day, be resilient, bounce back. And that's mm -hmm. how it really, it did. It shaped my life because today, just the things I'm doing for women and helping women. I want them to see the same Jesus yes. that I experienced as a little girl and how he's there for us to give us that comfort and peace yes. through everything we go through. Yes. Well, it sounds like your mother really helped you to develop an appreciation for prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How has your prayer life, because I mean, you're a woman that's not a stranger to adversity. Mm -hmm. How has mm -hmm. prayer fueled your life? in so many ways. I, I Going through cancer was um, one of my rock bottom moments and I realized 
going through cancer, it can be very scary, of course. Not I mean, it's, it's almost shocking to your system. Yes. And I don't know what I would do if I didn't have prayer. I don't know what people do in the middle of the night when fear comes in and grips me. It, it was almost choking me certain nights. And I would just go to prayer. And it's almost instant. It just calms my spirit, calms my heart from racing. And so prayer has just really just transformed everything in my life because it's the first thing I do now. I didn't always do this though. I, yes. I, you know, I saw my mom and it's beautiful, the story. But like I said for a minute, a minute ago, I had to find it myself because I wasn't always just first turning to prayer. I, I did try to turn to other things. And yeah. Let's be real, right? Yeah, real talk. Absolutely. But I always, every time I did turn to prayer, I did have that peace. And so that's what really kept me grounded in prayer to go back to that. Because, you know, as a human, I'd forget. Yes. You're going through things, you're having pain, setbacks, challenges, and you want to scream. Yes. And the more I thought about my mom and my upbringing and how she got through, I would just, you know, say, Lord, here I am. I just need you. There's so much power in just yes. saying and asking to hold his hand. Well, it's like you were raised by a real life superhero. Yes. I mean, to really yes. experience life like that, you were yes. talking about even before in the green room about mm -hmm. the halo that she had to wear and just all yes. of this pain she experienced. So let me ask you, you were a young girl. You're mm -hmm. like 10 years old mm -hmm. as your mom's going through this, but she is mm -hmm. so joy filled and mm -hmm. so encouraging to others despite her pain. Mm -hmm. Was that difficult for you to navigate the goodness mm -hmm. of God and watching your mom, who is your hero, suffer? 100%, yes. It was very, very difficult because as we mentioned earlier, yes. I loved her. She, I'm an only yes. child. She was my best friend. And to watch this woman suffer, also to see my dad, who was so healthy, he ran every day. He did five to eight miles a day, seven mm -hmm. days a week, wow. my whole life, wow. okay? So here he is, a caretaker. My heart went out to him, yeah. always. And I never talked about it, but that's why the power of prayer can be yeah. just so important for all of us to know that we can have peace no matter what. Yes. She was my superhero. Mm -hmm. She was everything to me and it was very difficult. But I remember driving to work in the morning at eight in the morning and knowing she's in a lot of pain because we talked every day, <laughs> probably 25 times a day. I'm not gonna lie. That's every awesome. morning, I'd call, first person I'd call in the morning on my way in to work. How are you? Good. What are you doing? Nothing. Okay, I'll call you back in five. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, but I knew she was suffering even in the morning when she woke up. That was her hardest time getting out of bed because she had to get on her medicine every day. So I would tear up every morning and just say, Lord, you got this. I see her, I'm, I, I know that you're with us and I put my faith in him. I put my mm. trust in him because what else is there? There's nothing else. And I know that I wanna just share with you my acronym for trust yes. because it's really changed a lot for me, my mindset, trust. And I've learned to just trust, trust total reliance upon spiritual timing. Because I wanted her healing. Amen. I wanted it so badly. I wanted to see her walk. I prayed her, her, you know, I had a vision of her walking again because she had walkers and wheelchair and all that. And I didn't get to see that. I didn't get to witness her complete healing. However, I never stopped trusting because her faith was unwavering and that's what I saw and that's how I had to be. And tell us quickly here about the one prayer. Your father gets diagnosed with a rare form of blood cancer. Mm -hmm. Your mother's still battle, battling with rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. Share with us about her one prayer changed the trajectory mm -hmm. of your family. That was an amazing moment in my life, incredible awakening to see when my dad was in the hospital going through a stem cell transplant. He was, his whole immune system was stripped. So he was sleeping all day and you know, just, my mom stood over his bed and said this one prayer that really did change my life seven years ago because I saw the power in this prayer and she just prayed that the Lord would heal this man, that doctors would see a miracle in this hospital in Boston and that his story would live on. 
and people to this day would still be in awe of my dad. Mm -hmm. My mom passed six weeks from that day. Wow. She wow. passed of a sudden aneurysm that took her life. She was here at seven. We were actually taking my dad to his seven, seven, um, six year check, six week checkup and she passed that morning, mm. very suddenly. And that one prayer is still living on because my children know the power of prayer, people in our community. She had over 700 people at her wake and funeral and my dad is thriving today. And it does start with Jesus. one prayer, that's it. Wow, you, that's Jesus. outstanding. Well, you know, I believe that same anointing that is on your mother. Kind of reminds me of the story of uh, Paul when he told Timothy, I'm persuaded it was in your grandmother and your yes. mother, and now it's yes. in you. Well, that same yes. thing is mm -hmm. in you and yes. flowing through you. And so thank you for your testimony. Yes. And I'm really glad because she's going to be back in just a little bit. So you're going to want to stay tuned. There's going to be more coming up with her uh, at the end of our program today. Yes. And next up is my dear friend and sister, Pastor Nisi Den Dennis White. And we have a lot more in store on this program. We'll be right back. With our thanks for your generous gift this month, request your 16 month Jewish Christian victory calendar when you give in support of Cornerstone Television Network. Inside the calendar, you'll discover stunning photos of sites in the land of Israel that have been vital to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, find encouragement through scripture, reminding us of God's faithfulness in the midst of struggle. The 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar features beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, room to track important dates, American and Jewish holidays, and a victory scripture for every month. Thank you in advance. Your partnership allows us to reach the lost through Christian television, provide our 24-7 prayer line, and support outreach to widows, orphans, and more. To request your calendar, call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Well, joining us now, we have my dear friend and sister, Pastor Nisi Dennis-White of the Lord's Church in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. She is a gift to the body. I only got to know her a few years ago. And this woman's anointing and power and authority that she walks in is truly a gift from heaven for this region and for this world in this hour. Pastor wow. Nisi, thank wow. you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We are just honored. blessed to be here, guys. Well, my listen. brother and my sister, that's right? Really, Come on, let's be just call it what it is. Sister that's from another right. mister. That's all. That's right. Come that's on. Right. Well, listen, everybody may not remember this. Nine years ago, almost to the day, yeah. I think it was my first interview. Back in the day, we had a thing called Real Life 360. Okay. You and I were on here. We were yep. transitioning because yes. your father had passed away yep. and you were taking over the Lord's Church. Right. Well, my and mother that, actually was, was transitioning from pastoring at the time okay. too. Okay. Yep, that was it. And then you were yep. taken over and yep. then I was here and yep. I was taking over a church and yep. I, I think you were my it first ever interview. It was a takeover moment, interview. I guess. It really was. <laughs> Not intentionally like that, but yes. And I believe this is going to be a prophetic moment as well, that we're entering another it. leg it's of true. the race and another leg of the journey. So catch it's us true. up a little bit. What's God been doing in your life in this season? Wow, guys. And so I've just honestly been on a path of just joining the Lord like every one of us who are in the family of God. That's why I started That's out with brother and sister. Because yeah. this is important that we remember. We're the That's family right. of That's God. Right. Yes. And so I just believe the Lord in this hour is just... Uh, stripping down his church mm. to remind us of that, yes. that despite how we grew up in ministry, despite the denomination that we are associated with, despite any political divide that's been happening in our country, yeah. God is coming for one church. That's right. And he's designing, I think, the systems and the changes that we see individually, corporately, you know, in any other way to remind us of that indeed. He's coming for his one church. We are the bride of Christ. That's yes. right. We are the body of yes. Christ. We, we are his people. We know you're talking about the political divide. There's a lot going on in this season. Yeah, uh, it's true. I mean, I see families that want to come together for Thanksgiving. Right. Literally. Yeah, because yeah. of that. Or, I mean, back in the day with COVID. I mean, so yes. many things that divide us. It's true. You do a thing called Pittsburgh Friends. Exactly. Yeah. How, what, explain to the people and tell us about what exactly does that uh, give Pittsburgh and the pastors in the area? Yeah, so our, our, our prior guest here, Kelly, was sharing an acronym, so I'm, I'm now with an acronym. Come on. You are the queen here, right? of those, well, by I'm the way. I'm the queen. She's the but queen. she mentioned an acronym. <laughs> and so Pittsburgh Friends, Friends, First Responders. 
the pe people of God are to be first responders, right? Amen. Yes. Definitely understanding that we are inspiring and ending with diverse, uh, neighbors diversity stance. First responders initiative, ensuring neighbors diversity stands. F R I E N D S. So, yes, exactly. So God created diversity. I, yes. just to, right. And right. so the, the enemy has used it to divide us, yes. but it's God's way to connect us mm -hmm. and to value each other for who we are. But at the end of the day, we're all children of the Lord. That's right. That's our identity. See, and that's what I love. You're not just a woman of words, because we talk about all the time. She's a wordsmith, honey. Oh, I mean, this God. woman can <laughs> preach. Yes, she, yes. she just, well, it, there's you. a gift on your life. You. But you are putting action behind this call from Christ himself to be one body. Yeah. And tell us what that action looks like and how it has had impact already. Wow, that's a great question. So I, friends, I believe one of the fundamental calls of God on the leaders in his church is to be friends. Yeah. Simply yeah. be friends. Can you be my neighbor? We're, we're in yes. Pittsburgh, right? Uh, so Mr. Rogers yeah. is yeah. in the house. Yes. Yeah, he was a prophetic man. Won't you be my neighbor? The anointing yes. of and so right. the, <laughs> Yeah, come the on. And so the, the friends, even the first responder comes from Luke 10 where the, God answers the question, who is my neighbor? Yeah. And he tells this parable about the Good Samaritan. That's right. Isn't it interesting that the priests walked past that wounded man? Yeah. The, the Levite kept right. walking. Right. But the one who responded, who was the first responder, was the Good Samaritan. And God was answering the question, who is my neighbor? Yeah. The one who stops. Yes. The one who knows that despite their agenda, their program, there is somebody in need. Mm -hmm. And so we're to be first responders. We should, we should take the initiative and ensure that our neighbor's diversity stands. No matter what our background, our calling, our, our office and ministry, at the end of the day, God wants us to treat our neighbors, love your neighbor like yourself and stop. So he told in the parable, go and do likewise, mm -hmm. right? And so I just believe the fundamental basic move of God is that we as pastors, leaders, ministers, whatever you want to call yourself, be a friend. Let's, can we be friends? Can we be neighbors? And so I believe the cross-pollination that God is calling us to as the body of Christ is to get out of our comfort zone because that good Samaritan had to stop what he was doing. So, you know, and that to me, in fact, Pittsburgh Friends came out of the COVID Yes. So the, the, the nation stopped, the world stopped. There was a message yeah. for us to just not look at what we're doing, but look what God is doing. Mm -hmm. And so that those friendships and those relationships are not on accident. We have to be intentional. Yes. I will never get to know you if I stay in the east side of Pittsburgh yes. or the west side of Pittsburgh or the, or the south or the, or, the, or, the, or the north. We have to cross pollinate intentionally. Sometimes that That's means good. a pastor or a leader has to drive 45 minutes somewhere else to be in fellowship. Yes. Imagine that. So, so the enemy has used convenience, I believe, in a lot of ways to keep us mm. isolated and to keep us from connecting with each other. Yes. And so we're better together. I know that's a cliche, but I believe the church, the capital C church, would be a lot stronger if we understood what Jesus and through Paul and in in Corinthians said that that's why many of you are weak and sick among you. You don't discern the body. Come on. Come if we on. discern the body and recognize how much you need me and I need you and you need me and I need you, the right hand or the hand can't say to the eye, I don't need you. So we've been used to one hand or yep. one eye or one leg. And so God is, I'm not coming for that. I'm yep. coming for the body. And so I just believe this is a time where God's going to raise up his people around the world, yes. the church around the world. Literally, denominationalism has been part of the divide, let's be honest. Yes. But I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian before I'm a Baptist. Yes. That's right. Right? That's it. That's I, so it. if we really buy into the narrative of God, not yes. ours, yes. it really will shift the way we see our ministries, the way we see each other, and how we support each other, even in the body of Christ, Pittsburgh and otherwise. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Nisi. And uh, we're going to have you back as well in just a moment. So we want you all to stay tuned because we're going to have more with her and Kelly. But right now, Tom has a new spirit walk for us as we continue to explore the book of Acts. Let's take a look.
So we're here at his place in Manessin, one of my favorite places, great coffee shop, you should stop by sometime. But we're talking about the book of Acts and we're talking about the spirit and what was the success of the early Christians? What was the key to their early success of that church that was just founded and so many were being added day by day? Well, first, let me tell you a little story. One time I was leading a team and we went into Appalachia. We went to a church on a mountaintop in Kentucky and uh, we were there to serve and we went to their Sunday service and the pastor, he was preaching about, I don't even know what his sermon was about. I'm sure you've experienced that, but he would stop every so often and in his Kentucky accent, he would say, read your Bible, say your prayers and be good. Read your Bible, say your prayers and be good. I'll tell you what, after years of serving the Lord, I realized that my relationship doesn't get too far away ever from those important disciplines of reading my Bible, saying my prayers, and being good. That's righteousness, that's holiness, being good. Well, let's see, let's, let's put that in the book of Acts context that we're talking about. So let's read Acts 2.42. This is what it says. Now, 3,000 people had just been added to the church, okay? 3,000 people. So, let's see what happened. It said, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. All right, so what do those things mean? All right, they were talking about, the, they, were, they were reading their Bible. It was not their Bible, it was their, the teaching that they were having from the apostles. They were devoting themselves to that. And then they were devoting themselves to prayer. What is prayer? It's just conversation with God, right? And so they were devoting themselves to that. I'm sure they were doing it privately, but also collectively. And then they were devoting themselves to the breaking of bread, okay? And to fellowship. What a wonderful thing. Let's devote ourselves to fellowship. Hey, maybe you can go to a coffee shop like this, have some fellowship. Breaking of bread, is that communion? Well, yeah, it probably was. Do this in remembrance of me. But also, just going from house to house, sharing meals, having this wonderful time. This was a key to the early church's success. It wasn't just about the incredible miracles. They were so important but we're called to something better than miracles. We're called to a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when we have that relationship, and when we have that relationship with each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord, we need to continue to do those things. Devote ourselves to the word of God, to the apostles' teaching. Devote ourselves to fellowship with one another. Breaking of bread, blessing the Lord, remembering him, and also prayer. Having those times together. So let's do that. As we do that, the Holy Spirit empowers us. He encourages us. He gives us strength because we're not called to just stay there doing those things. We're called to go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those around us. And that's really the key to any spirit walk. What a great segment there. And you know, we're back here on the set with Kelly and Pastor Nisi, and we're talking about prayer and fellowship and how important that really is. You know, Pastor Nisi, I know prayer is very important to you and you've got a book coming out, kind of intertwining prayer and fellowship and pastoralship yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's called our body language. I was talking about the body of Christ and we have a language and it speaks loud. Either it's connecting us or dividing us. And we know the spirit of God that was just talked about in the upper room yes. connects us. They were in Amen. one place, in Amen. one accord, Amen. right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the book is coming out. And it will be out next month, October. So here we are. Very I'm excited good. about it. It's, again, our body language, exploring the principles on the path to one church. Mm. Let's go. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. go. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. We need that. And we've got two powerful women who are doing that, bringing this <laughs> message of prayer and unity. I know Kelly, you as well with yeah. your book, the um, the one prayer, the one body. Let's get Come it. On now. <laughs> Come on. Well, that Come on. just spoke. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's Let it. me ask you, how do you ladies stay consistent in prayer? And how do you teach women to stay consistent in prayer? through my book is yes. one way. <laughs> the one prayer is set up as, it really, I, I wrote the book to keep myself intentional and focused yes. on prayer and consistent because I found myself scattered somewhat in my prayer life. Yes. 
I'm human. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I, I, I wrote the book and set it up for a 52 week vision board to cast my prayers, my visions, and stay consistent every week yes. and write down the names of people I'm praying for. I think that is very important. Yeah. I get asked, I'm sure you get asked all the time, can you pray for this one and that one? And I'd yes. say yes and forget and feel terrible because I want to pray for everybody and I yes. want to have a place to document their miracles and answers and people and so well, I stay consistent well, that way. How many times, though, let's be honest, we've all probably done it. I'm going to pray for you. Yes. And you know, you know, <laughs> you're like, no, you ain't. We yeah. need to repent right now. Yes. But that's great that's that you have I'm that, though, yes. to be able to go back that's and do it. Because I've done that at times. I wrote that's it for yeah. me to help myself get yes. on track with being dedicated and disciplined yeah, and consistent yeah. in prayer. And now it's helping everyone else. Wow. I love wow. that. Yeah, yeah. So you were sharing about your mom yes. in your, in your yes. testimony. And so you grew up around prayer. Mm -hmm. I did. Which, which brings an atmosphere that helps people get a yes. discipline mm -hmm. that they wouldn't other, otherwise yes. have in their homes. So we have Absolutely. a prayerless, I believe, generation. Amen. And yet, yet God himself, if you're going to name your church, name it a house of prayer. Amen. Yes. He said, my house will be called a That's house right. of prayer. That doesn't mean a physical building necessarily. Right. You are a house. I am a house. Yes. All yes. of God's people are a house. So we are yes. to be a house of prayer, yes. mm -hmm. but it is a discipline. So it people is. say they go to the gym, do you go to prayer? Exactly. And so that is, a, to me, it's a discipline. So mm -hmm. what has helped me in 2020 when the uh, pandemic, our church created a prayer line because we weren't together. Mm -hmm. right. So we got this prayer line and guys, it's been going on ever since. Wow. <laughs> it has Go. not stopped. It has yeah. not stopped. Yeah, I and I believe that prayer line is every yes. day, Monday through Friday, 12 noon, no awesome. matter where you're at, the men pray on Monday nights. And so that has been a source mm. of discipline for me. Mm. Yes. Is that I know at 12 noon, my literally set my alarm. So there's another discipline. Right. Right. Yeah. You set your right. alarm to get up. You, you set your to. alarm to do other things. Set your alarm to go to prayer. Right. And what people right. also don't realize is prayer is not talking to God, it's God talking to us mm -hmm. as yes. well. It's a conversation. Mm -hmm. yes. So uh, back to Pittsburgh Friends real quick. We have five goals and the first one is lament, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. uh, repent and prayer. Yes. The second one is listening. And so prayer people forget is also listening yes. Yes. because God said, I know you gave me your list of things, but I wanted to talk to you yes. about, so I want to tell you something. Yes. You know? So remember to listen to learn, when you mm -hmm. listen, you learn, you lead, and then to love. So that's oh, still wow. part of it. Yeah. So yeah. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is so good. so good. I mean, all of those little things yes. add up to create a consistent yes. life of God. prayer. Yes. yes, it's not on accident. No, it's not. No. And yeah. I think that has Doesn't been a theme happen. over Doesn't and over. Like happen. you nope. said, Kelly, like you said, Pastor right. Nancy, yeah. you must be intentional about it. Yes. You have Amen. to be intentional. Well, get around a person that prays. Yes. yes. That's contagious. Yes. The power you know? of community in prayer. Yeah. That. It yes. is so good. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we are so appreciative of your time here. We hope that you will continue to devote yourselves to prayer, and we'll see you next time. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.